What's up guys, Mike here with Cards 2 Sports Cards. Today I want to talk about how to buy inventory for your eBay store. I've touched on this topic in a few other videos, but I want to go more in depth on how I buy my inventory and places where you should or should not buy your inventory if you're trying to flip sports cards on eBay for profit. And also some places that might fall in the middle. Before we get into it, if you want to unlock the secrets of selling and investing in low-end sports cards on eBay, this channel is your go-to source for expert tips, honest insights, and strategies to help boost your eBay sales. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button if you want to stay ahead in the card selling game, maximize your profits, and take your cards selling business to the next level. You can also check out my hockey card channel at Puck Mike where I open and talk about hockey cards. All right, so before we talk about the places where you can and should buy your inventory, let's talk about the worst place you should not buy your inventory for your eBay store. The number one place you should not buy inventory for your eBay store if you're trying to flip sports cards for profits is by buying sealed boxes of product. Sealed boxes like hobby boxes, retail boxes, blasters, loose packs. Those are all terrible ways to buy inventory for your eBay sports card store. And the reason they are terrible ways to buy inventory is because you are rarely going to sell enough cards from that box to even break even, let alone make a profit. Let's take the cost of a hobby box, for example. And we're gonna use the recent release of Series 1 Hockey as our guide. Now, if you're watching this video well into the future where I already have 100,000 subscribers, this advice should still apply, so don't let the date of this box that we're using for this example make you hit that skip button. 2324 Series 1 Hockey currently runs about 150 US dollars depending on where you buy your box. There's 12 packs in the box and 12 cards a pack, so 144 cards total. It's a dollar four per card. If you look at the configuration of the box, your inserts to base percentage is 25%. Inserts to base percentage is something I just started measuring on my own. I've never heard of that metric before, but maybe I've created something new. So just remember, you heard it here first, but it's basically the number of cards in the box that are anything other than a simple base card divided by the total number of cards in the box. So let's look at our chances of recouping $150 on this hobby box. Now this is my own personal sell price calculator that I use to gauge how much profit I can make on a card or collection or box. So we got a dollar four per card right here. So what you want to do, and I'll go more in depth in another video about how to price your cards, measure profit, expenses, etc. But what you want to measure if you're deciding if you can make a profit on a particular item or box are the net sales that you're going to get from those items. The net is after all of your expenses have been paid. I see a lot of sellers do this sometimes. They'll go to eBay and they'll look at the reports and they'll see they've had a ton of sales. But when you really dig into the numbers and cut back all the expenses, including the cost of the card, you need to make sure you're getting a profit. So if you paid $1 for per card and you sell three at $1.50, you didn't make $4.50. Your gross sales were $4.50, but then you subtract all of your expenses from those sales for your net profit. So when I measure if a box or collection was profitable, that's how I measure it because ultimately I didn't make my money back until I net an amount equal to or greater than the amount of the box. So we start with a dollar four per card. This is my shipping cost for one US card right now. That includes the shipping label and other supplies like penny sleeves. The eBay fee here is just a projection based on recent sales, but it's fairly accurate. Ad fee, I do 3% for most of my cards. Now the sale price. This is where things get good. So if we sold one of these cards for $2.50, I would only get three cents profit on this card after all of my expenses. So in order to net $150, which was the cost of the hobby box, Let's see how many cards we would have to sell. 4,450 cards at a 3% profit. And there's only 144 cards in the box. Of course, you're going to be able to sell some of the cards for more than $2.50. You might get a decent insert that sells for 10 or 20, but even at $20, you're only netting around $14, and you'd have to sell at least 10 cards from this box for $20 to get $150. And the chances of you pulling enough inserts that will sell for that much are very rare. So as you can see, buying boxes like this to stock inventory for your eBay sports sports card store is a bad idea. So if you're not going to stock your inventory through sealed boxes, where are you going to buy it? The number one and only place I currently buy my inventory for my sports card store is by buying collections on eBay. Since I started buying collections like this on eBay to flip for profit, I've bought 11 collections of various sizes and I've made profit on three of them. Now, two of those are recent purchases that I don't have listed yet. So if you take those off the list, that's a third of my collection that I've bought. It's bringing in profit in less than a year since I started this method around last April or so. And I'm only at like a $40 loss right now with about a $500 investment. With the way the sports card market has been going, that's actually not that bad. I wouldn't consider that I've scaled my store yet. I have about 1,600 listings, so I think I'm actually doing pretty good. And a lot of those cards that I have listed are from sealed boxes that I opened for my hockey card channel. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. One of the huge Young Guns NHL lots that I purchased cost me about $200, and it's netted me $168 so far. But I've only sold 70 cards from that collection, so I have 117 cards still out there on eBay that I can generate $32 net profit from. And if I 
I do, I've made profit on that collection. Those are pretty good chances that I'm going to make money on that collection. Now to use this method by buying your inventory on eBay, you really have to search for collections that fit your budget that you think you can make money on. Find a few listings that you like, save them to your watch list, and then use eBay's similar items feature or seller's recommendations to find new inventory. Now I know this method works because I've bought collections and made profit from them as I mentioned. Can it work at large scale? That's what I'm currently working through and that's the entire point of this channel as you follow me on this journey. Okay, where well, you don't want to buy inventory, sealed boxes. Where you do want to buy inventory, eBay collections. Now, what falls in the middle? Now, the other reason I'm putting these in the middle is because I haven't really bought collections from these sources yet. I think a lot of them could be great. Some of them might even be better than buying collections on eBay. Like I said, I just haven't tested them yet. I've started to look at them a little bit more and I'm getting more comfortable with maybe making a purchase there. First one on the list is Facebook Marketplace. I know some sellers who've bought collections on here. I know JMAX Sports Cars, if you watch his channel, he's bought a few collections on there. It definitely seems hit or miss. I've been poking around there a lot more lately, like I said. Honestly, for bigger collections, like thousands of cards, I just don't want to go to somebody's house because people are weird. And the chances of you getting a seller to load all those cards into a car, meeting you in a public place, just for you to maybe not buy it, it's pretty rare. They don't want to haul those cards. They want you to come take them away for them. So there is a bigger risk with these bigger collections. But small collections, I can definitely see the potential there. Like I said, I've looked at some, and I can really see the potential. There's other sites that are similar to eBay too that do sell sports cards, like Whatnot, Amazon, Shopify, Etsy, all those things. I haven't tried any of those. I recently discovered an online store on Goodwill. I think it's shopgoodwill.com. Thinking I could cherry pick some collections there. I've personally taken a ton of base cards to Goodwill, a lot of which I know are not worth a lot of money. But some of the collections I've seen, it seems like it could be a viable option, but it also seems very similar to eBay and that you have to kind of bid on the item. So I'm almost certain I'm not the first reseller that's tapped into that supply. I could see buying a few on there just to see what it's all about at some point. Another place that I think could be great for buying inventory for your store is by going to garage sales. I've seen a lot of YouTubers who just go to garage sales and buy things that have stumbled upon sports card collections. Usually people selling cards at garage sales aren't as familiar with the hobby or they just inherited a binder of old cards from somebody that they don't really know anything about. So sometimes you can find some gems in there, but there's also people at garage sales that are overpricing them. They're doing the same thing that a lot of people are doing on eBay. Like I said, I haven't done this method yet. I've seen some other people do it. I think it can work. I'd probably buy a few small collections on Facebook Marketplace before I did the garage sale thing. For now, I'm going to continue to buy my inventory on eBay with the huge Major League Baseball collection that I just bought and the massive hockey card collection. I think I'll be good for a while on inventory. The only other thing I want to say about sealed boxes that I mentioned earlier is that if you do open sealed boxes for a break channel like I do with my hockey card channel, it's totally okay to sell those on eBay. I know that I'm not going to make a full profit on a lot of those cards or make my money back on some of those boxes, although a few of them I have with some really good pulls, but it's okay to sell those. Don't think because you're not going to make all your profit back on that box that well, it doesn't make sense to sell any of them. You're still listing items on your store, getting variety, getting traction to your store. Maybe sellers will buy some of the cards from your collections that you specifically bought to earn profit. I open less cards on my hockey card channel than I used to, and I do more review videos, so I don't have that much problem anymore. But if you're doing that, it's totally okay to sell those cards. Just make sure you separate your inventory and know which ones you're buying specifically to flip for profit and which ones you're buying just for pleasure or for a channel. That's it, guys. I'd love to know where you buy your inventory for your sports card store, so leave me a comment below and let me know where you buy it. And if you want to unlock the secrets of selling and investing in low-end sports cards on eBay, this channel is your go-to source for expert tips, honest insights, and strategies to help boost your eBay sales. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button for me if you want to stay ahead in the card selling game, maximize your profits, and take your eBay card selling business to the next level. And like I said, you can also check out my hockey guard channel at Puck Mike, where I open and talk about hockey cards. Really excited about where the store is heading. We've surpassed 1,600 listings. We're approaching 400 subscribers on this channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. Really appreciate the support. I will see you in the next video.